All right, so here we have uh, two different chatbots. One is built with uh, Next.js, and the other one is a Streamlit. And as an LLM model, I'm using a Claude a Sonnet 3.5, which is the latest. So let's test this a little bit. Say hi. All right, so it is telling me an AI agent created by Anthropic, which verifies that this is actually built with Claude. Uh, and also, let's say hi here. There you go. Okay, so now, um, as you can see here, both places, the streaming is enabled. The data comes, like, for example, who is Trump? And we see how the answer comes in a stream, right? The last time when I used uh, fast API backend, uh, against the next, you know, next JS, I was unable to uh, pull this off as uh, streaming content, and also when I did it with uh, Streamlit, let's say who is Biden, this is also streaming just fine. This was also wasn't working properly with a fast API backend. Now there are two reasons why these chatbots are pretty special. One would be every request we make here are being traced using Langsmith. As you can go here, so this is our current project. Make it large a little bit. There you go. Langserve, Next.js, and Streamlit project. So if we go in, we get to see all the requests that we have made, and we can even dig down deeper and get more details, how many tokens used, et cetera, et cetera. So which could be extremely important for debugging. So in this video, I'm gonna show how to set that up. And the other reason would be both of them having a common backend, which is Langserve. This is what's happening. Both uh, interfaces, the front end interfaces like a Streamlit and Next.js, they are only calling a singular, a single backend which is based on Langserve, where I have created a slash chat, an endpoint, an API endpoint, through which I'm actually calling the uh, Anthropic Cloud, Sonnet 3.5. So the advantage of this is that our its streaming mechanism and output, everything is handled by Langserve itself. And also, this way we are centralizing our AI logic in one single place, now we don't have to worry about which front end we use. We, we just call that API, and this could be like some other HTML, the uh, React front end, or whatever you may want to uh, use. You know, hundreds of different types of front end, but not you know, but uh, in no cases we ever have to worry about writing our AI logic because our AI logic now is centralized. That being said, let's check out this. Langserve backend. All right, so I'm running Langserve here. And as you can see, all those requests we made are actually showing up right here. By default, it gives us a few endpoints because this is uh, based on Fast API. I had to create this slash chat endpoint. Also, since this is a Fast API based, so by default, it gives us a slash docs. This is where it actually shows us all the endpoints and their details. And other than this uh, slash playground, Langserve gives us these two very important endpoints. One is slash invoke and one is slash stream. Only difference is the invoke is, gives you the result at once and stream streams you the results. So as you can see right here, our requests called slash stream endpoint. And that's why we got to see our results or ants or AI responses streaming across the browser, right? So let's go to the browser and check out a few of these. So slash docs gives us this, you know, shows us all the endpoints. Uh, but uh, recently, due to a Langchain upgrade, we are having uh, some. They're having a some um, version conflict with Pydantic. So if you look at here, it actually tells you that uh, the invoke, batch, stream, etc. endpoints are, are not being showed here. 
because of that conflict, these are not going to bother those endpoints being created. And that's why I could actually make those calls to it and get the answers. Only thing is, this document is unable to show these endpoint details, right? And the other one was slash playground, like slash chat slash playground. And once your um, LangServe installation is successful, this, this is the page to initially test it out. So let's say if I just say, who is Trump? Look at that. So this shows that our LangServe API is working. Since uh, the invoke and stream receives post request, not get request, that's why from the browser, this is what we're gonna get. To test these out, we need to use a tool called Postman. All right, so to test out that slash chat slash invoke endpoint with a uh, post method, I'm using uh, a Postman. And here I'm using this URL. That's my local LangServe URL. And for this to work, we are going to need the body data, JSON data for body. As input, I'm asking a question, what is the color of the sky? So if I hit send, there you go. I just got the result. So now, as you can see, Invoke gives us the entire result at once. So if I try the same with here, and this time I'm actually calling slash chat slash stream endpoint, exact same question and watch what happens. Look at this. It is actually streaming that data a little bit at a time. So that's what we have to capture at our front end and stream that to our front end browser, just like that, as we have been doing. What is Langchain? And this is the Next.js one, and this is the Streamlit one. So now let's get deeper into the Langchain code. All right, so this is uh, my LangServe code, the backend code. Here, uh, first thing we need to look at is the pyproject.toml. This is where uh, I'm actually getting all my dependencies. Specifically, you need to look at here, the uh, Langsmith and the Langchain Anthropic. This is the one give, you know, giving us the, the library to handle the Claude API. And Langsmith is helping us to connect to the Langsmith portal for tracing and debugging. And the next thing would be uh, this .env file. I just have an example one. This is what my uh, .env file looks like. All the API keys. And just for the uh, Langsmith tracing, we need these three. Langchain underscore tracing underscore v2 equals true. Then Langchain underscore API underscore key. And then the API key that I collected from the uh, Langsmith. Let's go and see where I got that from. Okay, I'm back at the Langsmith portal. So once you're here, all you have to do is just go under settings and API key. And this is where you get to create your API key. So let's go back. And this is where I declare the project name, LangServe, Next.js, and Streamlit project. And this is the one showing up in my Langchain portal. Also, if I go under projects, right there, you see this name that's coming from that environment variable. Let's go back. Okay, then this being said, now let's check out the actual server code. This is where I'm getting all my necessary libraries. And uh, this is where I am actually loading up all my environment variables that we just saw, creating my app, uh, creating my app object with fast API. And here, this is just a rerouting um, endpoint so that you know, if we go to the home page, it automatically takes us to the docs folder. I mean, takes us to the uh, docs URL. And this is where our main anthropic endpoint lies. I'm creating the model using chat anthropic. It's, uh, it's being brought from Langchain. The temperature zero, max token 1024, timeout none, max tries two. So after creating the model, 
I'm using Langchain's chat prompt template to create a system message and a user message. The human message is just user input, whatever uh, prompt that user inserts. And this is the main function from LangServe to create the route. This is where we send the app, the, the prompt we just created, and our model, this guy right here. And this is the important part. This is where we actually call it slash chat. And that's how, that's how our main endpoint is made. And enable a public trace link endpoint true. And with this line, enable public trace link endpoint setting to true. This is how we are actually communicating with the Langsmith. And then, and then this is just uh, the main function, bringing in Uvicorn and starting the Langserve server at port 8000. And that's all we have to do on our Langserve side. Now let's go take a look at our Streamlit front end. All right, so this is where we have our our Streamlit front end code. At the very beginning, I'm declaring the uh, API URL after importing my uh, necessary libraries, setting up the session state for messages. And this is where we're making an async call where we are actually putting a post request to our API URL and we are getting a stream data. So here we are looping through all the chunks and passing it to our session message chunk by chunk so that the response should display as a streaming response. And this is where I'm handling the error. And this is the simple Streamlit UI. This is where the title is, the subheader, and uh, the display of the messages. and and this is where we handle how the user prompt is being taken and displayed. With that, that said, let's go check out the Next.js code. All right, so Next.js, I'm not going to go over the entire UI UX stuff, but just the main parts. And this is where the uh, data is being displayed and called. So main important thing is this handle submit. Basically, you know, when we hit this, what happens? Uh, at the beginning, we are creating two, two state variables using use state, chat message, chat messages, and is loading. And right here, I'm setting is loading to true so that uh, a spinner is in action before we get the answer. Right here, we're loading up all the chat messages. And here, uh, I'm making the post request to slash API slash chat. And this is the Next.js backend. And here we are sending the uh, user input that we accept from this form right here, this input form. And once the uh, request is received, we are reading it using a get reader and then decoding it to text. And this is where we are handling the streaming request and displaying that as a streaming response onto the browser. And here's some error handling. And once everything's said and done, we're setting the is loading to false so that the spinner stops. Now let's go look at the Next.js backend that uh, basically this guy right here, slash API slash chat. And this is the, and this is the code. And as you can see, this is this sits under pages, under API, and then chat.ts. Here we're creating a, an async handler, uh, receiving the rec.body, the body messages. And this is where we're actually making to the making call to the to our LangServe backend, localhost 8000 slash chat slash stream. This is where we're mainly, this is where we're finally making the post request and sending the user input, which was the prompt to the body. And this is where we're handling so the error messages and setting the necessary headers. And we are sending the uh, streaming message back to the browser through this res.rout chunk, because these are the chunks we're receiving from our LangServe backend. And here we're handling some errors. That's pretty much it. 
with that, I conclude this video. Thanks for watching.